You have to understand the past to understand the present. And I'm joined right now by Richard McGregor, author of Asia's Reckoning. It's looking at the relationship between U.S., Japan, and China. And for people who may not be very um, knowledgeable about this topic, kind of explain to them what you'll be talking about today at the library. Well, if you think about the U.S. and how history, look at Charlottesville, history still reverberates between contemporary, in contemporary politics. The same is in East Asia. None of the big disputes in East Asia, China, Japan, China, Taiwan, North Korea, South Korea have ever been settled. And they're all, so these are all sort of frozen in the 50s conflicts and they're now all That boring. are still apparent. Well, yeah. they're now all coming to the surface in a, in a big way. And so it's, we're moving into a much more, you know, East Asia's all a bit, been all about an economic miracle. We're now m moving into geopolitics. It's becoming much more dangerous. Okay, and can you briefly, I know it's a big topic, briefly explain some of those problems that are coming to light today? Well, you know, China, for example, thinks that it should be the dominant power in Asia. In fact, the dominant power in Asia has been the U.S. So that's a big issue. How does China push the U.S. out? How does the U.S. respond? China wants to dominate Japan. Japan doesn't want to be dominated by China. And of course, if Japan gets into trouble with China, then the U.S. The US is an ally. Involved. The U.S. is automatically involved. And then, of course, we have this... Uh, crazy but rational young dictator in North Korea threatening the region with nukes and potentially the U.S. And what's your take? Um, it's all in the headlines right now about North Korea um, and you've actually visited. Tell us a little bit about it. Well, it, it's a country like no other one. It's like a Stalinist theme park, you know, very sad. You know, it genuinely seems totalitarian. The people, you know, seem brainwashed and the like. It hasn't changed that much since I was there. So it's, 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 in some respects, it's like the Kim family business. It's like a crime gang running a country. And, it, if that, and, and in that respect, it, it is very, very dangerous. Mm -hmm. Well, for people who come, because you'll be speaking at the library tonight, um, for people who are coming, what do you expect them, or what do you want them to take away from it? Well, I want them to understand how uh, important East Asia is. I want them to understand where the U.S. fits into East Asia and how that's changing. And I want them to understand how the rise of China is changing everything. Because could you explain real quick, maybe, how, how is the rise well, of China? Well, I mean, uh, America has dominated Asia since 1945. Uh, China thinks it should be there. And China thinks, well, thanks, America, you've done a great job, you can now leave. No, it's our turn. But, but yes, but other countries mm -hmm. in, the, in East Asia don't want America to leave. Japan doesn't, South Korea doesn't, Singapore doesn't, Australia doesn't. How that is worked out, you know, the U.S. and China are on a collision course. That's the bad news. The good news is they both know they're on a collision course and there's lots of incentives to steer away. I see. So I just have to see how that relationship works out. It'll dominate the rest of our lives, I promise you. All right. Well, Richard, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you. You'll be speaking, t speaking tonight at 7 o'clock at the main public library? Correct. All right. Awesome. Well, we